This is After Hours, one of the spaces the 25 plus community of our church come together. The 8 p.m. service no longer exists, but our reason for wanting to reach those who are 25 to 35 still remains. Why is it that the best conversations always happen at the end of the night? After that church service ends, or once people have left the party, or in a lounge after the gig, it's in that space and during that time when the lights are dimmed and the hype dissipates that you start to relax. We get a bit more honest and real about our lives. We become unfiltered and go below the surface. We we'll say what we really think or believe about the issues we're faced with in society. Some say it's during this stage of life that we struggle with identity exploration, instability, self-focus, feeling in between and as though we're providing a meaningless role to society as we float from one thing to the next. But what if we could be different? What if we could make a difference? We want to get right to the heart of people who find themselves around that 25 to 35 stage of life and establish how we can positively shape the society we live in and impact the people around us as Christians. After Hours is one of the spaces we want to do that. We'll unpack the challenges and the opportunities that come with this age by hearing people's stories from our community through Bible studies and meditations and have raw and honest conversations with people from all walks of life. Our hope is to provoke thoughts and cause convictions to rise up in you and inspire you to create conversations of your own, which encourages you to take actions and to positively shape society in your world. It is cold. It is cold outside. You were saying, Matt, about the yeah, Christmas we're saying, season. We are saying, it is Christmas season, and we just wanted to, I think, tie a bow yeah. on, on the year as a, as a team. Yeah. Um, I suppose we didn't start out as a team. No. <laughs> we're definitely <laughs> we're a, a bunch of misfits kind of thrown we're together. Thrown apart, and uh, and so I think when I, when I look back over 2020, one of my probably most favorite things is everything that went. Don't cry now, Rocky. Uh, Rocky's crying. <laughs> you said you wouldn't say it. <laughs> just one tear. And, uh... <laughs> so, I'll let you finish. Yeah, one of my favorite things about the year is actually being able to embark on this journey with you guys. And, um, and I know our sincere hope was to really somehow speak into the community of our church, the 25 to 35 year olds. And I don't know whether we've done a good job or not, but I've definitely enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I know we started out like for, for us all, it was our first time like preaching and speaking. Mm. We'd never done anything like that. We actually didn't even really know each other. We didn't work yeah. together in any form uh, of way prior to this either. Why don't we take a trip down memory lane? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nostalgia, it's in the air. Come on. We're smelling like pine, like <laughs> Jeez. trees. Jeez. 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 Jeez and pine. pine. But a bit, of, a bit of nostalgia, yeah. you know, I think I think it's in the air tonight. So um, there were there's so many, um, for me, kind of highlights throughout the year. But I want to know from you guys, like what's some of your fondest moments of 2020? Oh, I mean, it's been eventful. It? <laughs> it's been eventful. Let's, let's start on the highs. Let's start highs. Um, yeah, I think what what we've been able to do in terms of pivoting, not just as our local expression, but I think the whole world has had to pivot, yeah. right? And I yeah. think the the innovation that we've seen showcased in lots of different spheres of society has actually been inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's from the creative arts, whether it's from church communities, and even if you think about us as a community, like what we've done in terms of worship and how to communicate the Christ message yeah. in an innovative way yeah. to a particular demographic or new people. I think that's quite, quite cool. Yeah. I know that's quite nerdy to say. Yeah. How we've innovated spreading the gospel is cool. <laughs> but like, I just think some people are pivoted. Like we have yeah. as a... Yeah as a community and as a nation as a world pivoted <laughs> can you guys remember that um, episode where Dan Blythe led worship our God is an awesome God he reigns <laughs> that was a fun yes. one yes <laughs> that is listen yeah. we're all doing different things yeah, yeah. but all, also just the way he spoke about like how um, you know, like we actually have a choice every day to either worship God or worship 
the situation we're in or worship what's going on in the world or you know decide to actually deprive god of the worship that he deserves yeah so yeah like the same actually that was kind of one of my highlights Anybody can be a worship leader. Doesn't matter about the quality of your voice or whether you play an instrument. All you need to do is glorify God and point other people to Jesus. What that means is that worship is not limited to 20 minutes of singing on a Sunday. No, worship is a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle of no longer I, but Christ that lives in me, giving God all the glory. Which means if you're in business, you can be a worship leader in business. If you're in education, you can be a worship leader in education. If you're in hospitality, you can be a, a worship leader in hospitality. If you're in the media and the arts industry, whatever your vocation is, whatever your career is, you are there not just to get a paycheck, no, you are there to be a worship leader, to give God the glory and to point other people to Jesus. I think what I've loved is, um, especially like as you said, like it's kind of evolved from being like, what, start off as an 8 p.m. service, trying something new, and then going into this thing which we now have established as, I guess, after hours and, and mm. identifying the need for the, the 25 plus community has been seeing, I guess, the evolution of um, what we've been able to do, what we've been able to share, and the way we've been able to do it, and unpacking that along the way and kind of trying things and even, you know, getting different people in the community to share their stories and, and identifying things that are going on, you know, and being able to address those things and come rawly and honestly. I think we make it too much of a we too, make it yeah. too much of a thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I meet this person, they don't know God. Um, I need to, I, you know, and that's the classic the Bible bash. Yeah. You need to, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You need to come to church yes. so then you can so then you can meet God, yeah. and yeah. then we'll, yeah, then it will begin. But no, no, actually, how do I know my story of how God has impacted yeah. my life, and do I know it in a way that I can share? Yeah normally yep. where it's people aren't going to freak out yeah. but actually like it's it's real it's relatable yeah. people can see it and go oh i can almost find myself in your story yeah. like oh yeah okay i i didn't realize and so it's correcting this yeah. this image like we're we're correcting this image of church like yeah. this perception of church yeah. right now for some people it is correcting this this image of of god and, and who and who he actually yeah. is like he's not yeah. this he's not this genie he's yeah. not this like yeah. policeman yeah. you know yeah. pointing a finger right. in your face yeah. like yeah. hey I love you, and I actually, I actually want to be in relationship yeah, with you. Yeah. I can, I can help you, you know, yeah. and, and our life is better for it. Yeah. Adam Brown always comes back to me as one of uh, my highlights of him being able to just share um, throughout this kind of pandemic, throughout this global crisis, about how he's been able to kind of, I guess, rethink. Um, what he does yeah. and the way he operates. And so I think it's been awesome to be able to give people like that a, a platform to share because there's so many people who can identify with it and really relate to it. So I think that's been an awesome plus of what we've been able to do. Yeah, a lot of reality to stare us all in the face yeah, and either yeah. you can try and dodge it um, or you, you have to, or you can stare it down. Yeah. And I think the fact is you can't do that alone yeah. either. And I think that's what's really, um, being for me what I've actually really loved is the ability our ability I think and, and when I think of the depth of our vulnerability which we've been able to go on it yeah, kind of yeah. as any relationship it sort of starts here yeah. and, and we're kind of going down and then all, all of a sudden it's like we can be real about anything yeah. Yeah. and our heart is always what we're always saying is like how we want to keep the vulnerability the realness yeah. the yeah. authenticness the the grittiness the way that we talk with the, you know our friends or, or where, the way we talk to each other mm -hmm. offset mm -hmm. is is how we want to be able to i suppose encourage everyone who is who watches the show to talk with their friends yeah. you know yeah, and, right. and the fact that it's church doesn't mean that we take the rawness and the realness out of it it's actually because god is right in the center of all of that mess and chaos and yeah. and rocky like when you your message on about how the houses are burning down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that for me really stand and that was also, also one of your first preachers as yeah well. yeah it's a springboard of what you're saying i think this year has been exposing to a lot of things that were underneath the carpet in lots of different yeah. spheres of life, yeah. which has actually led for conversations that were had in back alleys or in bedrooms or in secret mm. are now having being had in private in public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, if we can own that, yeah. it's so like that's what reformation is. It's true. Do you know yeah. mean like, yeah. the, and we and the, our challenge is now to continually reformate our community, reform our communities yeah. and stuff like that. Because like you were saying, it's like anything that's in the darkness will be brought to light so the goal is there should be no separation between myself here and another yes. self yes. somewhere else yeah, yeah, yeah. and this year has been a challenge because of the hard-hitting things that have happened in wider society for us to be like i'm not 
a different person yeah. when I'm talking about Black Lives Matter outside yeah, or yeah, inside. Yeah. I'm not a different person yeah. when I'm talking about equality inside or outside. Yeah. Like, I'm the same here. Yeah, yeah. Even a man who dedicates his life to serve God will go through hardships. Because no matter how humbly I build, or how much sweat I put in, or how many nights I stay up building, or what kind of brick I use, houses can burn down. No matter how much love I give that person, or how many nights I stay up praying, or how many years I gave to that job, or how much trust I put in the church, houses can burn down. What the Bible tells me is that when my house burns down, God wants to be, be closer to me than ever before. In these crazy times, the fire is an opportunity to invite God into, into my life, to stand in the flames with me side by side. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I think you don't have to be a different person yeah. here. Yeah. You yeah. should be the realness that you talk with your best friend. You should be able to talk in a church pew. And it's actually, a re and it's actually a responsibility. Yes. yes. Like yeah. it's actually a responsibility yeah, to speak yeah. your, to speak truth and to speak your truth. Yes. And yeah, yeah. like, yeah. And I think that's what I, I have felt a burden on us to yes. do yeah. for our community is to actually with respect yeah. speak truthfully of you know situations even in our church and like yeah. how a few weeks ago you spoke about how the biggest thing we've had to deal with this year is trusting yeah. trusting our government trusting our church trusting each other trusting you know what what is covid what isn't yeah. covid all these things but actually i think when our leaders are vulnerable that is when we actually get to the truth when we get to trusting each other so mm. i just wanted to um, kind of ask you, how have you navigated trust this year? And how have you navigated trusting in all those different spheres personally? I don't find it hard to trust. Um, I do, I find it something that's really easy. Now, it doesn't mean I, I think that I just throw myself out there. Um, very much, I probably wait for my for trust to be broken. Mm. I'm very aware of people and but I'm really also prepared to be open and honest. I have, yeah. I have nothing to hide. Um, so, you know, we've talked about our struggles. So really try and make a conscious effort when people say, how's your week? It's not just to try and give them, yeah, it's all going yeah. okay. When we're friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't do it to every Tom, Dick and Harry out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people who are really in my world and I'm trying to kind of get into their world, yeah. like the barista, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get yeah, into yeah. his world because at the end of the day, I know that his life with Jesus is yeah. going to be better with yeah. than his life without Jesus. So yeah. Yeah. I want to get into his world. So we're developing a rapport. Mm -hmm. So quickest way we can do that is vulnerability. Yeah. I'm going to show you how human I am. And that is to go, man, I had a really hard week. Or for us as a family where we probably hit one of our lowest points this year, yeah. we just had a third miscarriage. Yeah. And I'll tell them that and I'll say, like not trying to put it down on it, but I just want to be real with you. Yeah. Like yeah. we had yeah, totally. we had that time, yeah. but then we had a great, yeah. we had some great family time mm -hmm. and we feel like God's brought us through this, yeah. you know? So it's not just leaving it there. There is nothing gained yeah. in me being like, oh, it's sweet, throw it all under okay. the rug. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, one, yeah. no one wins yeah. in that. No, God no. doesn't win in that. What I think has been really amazing is we've been able to bring some of that to the forefront of what we're talking about. Yeah. So we've been able to shed a light on some of the things that maybe aren't talked about. And, and you know, where we've gone vulnerable, because I know even like Rocky, like mm. we talked about everything that was happening with Black Lives Matter yeah, yeah, yeah. before even it came up in our conversation to so then talking about it yeah, within yeah, yeah. that mm. conversation. Yeah, on yeah. And having all of those things, we've journeyed together, together. in yeah, amongst yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's actually been really significant because it goes back to all always wanted to go back to that that rawness and that authenticity that's been one of the the biggest things we've been able to do as well is have those conversations that we've been having off camera and bring them onto camera i think also we need to like um debunk the whole thing that like to positively shape society means that you need to be like in like fully just doing church stuff oh, because absolutely. literally I was literally having yeah. a conversation with, <laughs> like my sister works for the NHS a yeah. nurse and the other day she calls me she'll be okay with me saying this yeah. she calls me and she's like 
a deal I don't feel like I'm doing anything for the world yeah like you're like doing all these things for church and I yeah. and I'm like excuse me yeah, yeah. I'm not saving people's Literally, lives every single yeah. day yeah, yeah. I'm not going and you know helping people yeah. change and do all this stuff and like when COVID was happening she was like on the front line yeah. like positively chasing um changing society does not mean that no. I'm everyone's in ministry I'm, in, I'm in yeah, ministry no, yeah, no of course yeah. not if we can invite a community to wrestle yeah because you know i mean israel the definition of israel is like the one that wrestles with god so like yeah. foundation to our tradition yeah. is like come and wrestle yeah, like yeah. wrestle with god yeah. and leave changed so like yeah. that, i feel like that's what the after hours conversation continually is and will be so i guess one thing is what's something that you've wrestled and come to grips with this year for yourselves in reflection start with you fadila Ooh. I, I've had to really go like, yes, God is good. That's a fact. Yes, God will provide. That's a fact. But it's actually okay to be sad about it. Yeah. It's actually okay to yeah. be. Yeah. Like, because I think we have so much pressure to be like, you know, I'm, I'm surviving and God is good and God's going to whatever. But then actually, it's okay to be upset. Yeah, and, it's true. And, and I've had to learn because of where, like, my husband and I are very different characters. I am that kind of like, I'll just keep going. Yes. Jesus but like and he's not he's like more like realist like no nothing's happening right now yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, here yeah. Um, and I've had to learn to be okay with that mm. and to go you know what like I have to support in this time and what would Jesus do mm. Jesus would Jesus would listen yeah, course, Jesus yeah. would listen and I, I think um, in Adam and Yinka's um, chat about anxiety and depression it was about listening and asking yeah, the right questions really good, yeah. so I think I've had to learn to ask the right questions and be okay when other people aren't okay mm. yeah, yeah you know and yeah. not try to get the best out of them and be like the joy of the lord is your strength yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the joy of the lord is your strength yeah. that yeah. is a fact yeah, yeah, yeah. however that doesn't mean you're going to be happy all the time yeah, yeah. 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 what about you rocky yeah. um i would probably have i probably have two things I think. Can, Ooh. We, have, can we have two? Two no, things. I invented the question, so I'm just going to make things <laughs> up as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> They're like condiments, but I love points. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think one of them has been, um, I probably touched on it earlier, and it came to mind, so I'm kind of going with flow. Anything that comes to mind, I'm like, ah, you probably wanted say me it. to say that. Um, <laughs> that, that. That scripture in Isaiah where it's like, um, perfect religion is this to like look after the needy to look after the vulnerable and make sure that the widow is cared mm. for and that kind of that kind of constant reference in scripture to continually look at the people that are being neglected yeah. and as soon as you take your eyes off the people that are being neglected you've missed the point because as soon as you take your eyes off the bottom of the rung you're standing on the necks of people yeah. like wow. and, it, and it's that quick yeah, and i sure. genuinely think it's like in any community it's that quick as soon as you're like, oh no, we're doing fine, there's people you turned your back on. Yeah. Yeah. So like scripture is, and it's like that in James where it's constantly like, go back, return to the mirror, yeah. return to the mirror, daily return to the mirror so you can see the reflection of God, not yourself. So I think that this year has been massively awakening that constant need for self-reflection and communal reflection yeah. to make sure that we're looking after the neglected in all spheres because that changes as well. Yeah. And I think that's pretty weird too because the, Society is constantly moving and growing and evolving, so therefore the people that are being neglected are constantly changing and reforming. And so yeah. there is a constant need to be like, who can we help? And then I think the second thing is like the need to have a personal relationship with Christ, as opposed to building my faith on anything else yeah. other than a personal relationship yeah. with mm. Christ. I made a de decision to become Christ follower. Like, and membership is cool, but fellowship is the most important thing. Like, I can be a member of a local expression, but that's not where my Christ, yeah. like the, my faith yeah, is really built on. Yeah. And if it is, we see this year. Do you mean like when yeah. you build your faith on an individual or institution yeah. or a particular community, and it's not built on Christ, as yeah. soon as you take, sweep the floor, or like take the carpet under, mm. it's like, what's happening? Yeah. And I feel like this year was a lot of what's happening. And I think it's like when we forget where we need to cast our cares. Yeah. Um, and one another highlight of mine actually was when um, Sarah and Isaac. Oh, oh wow. come on That's now. So beep, 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 beep. Right? Yeah. How was how good was that when they yeah. led that? And I really feel like that 
I, even for, when I think of this this year, cast your cares on his shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, you know, mm. that's it. Yeah. Cast your cares on his shoulders. Cast your cares on his love. In my weakness, in my trouble, he won't let go. If I lose my way, Lord, I pray, lead me home. In the darkness, when it's hardest, you are my hope. In my highs and lows, cast your cares on his shore. When I'm hiding, you're my hiding place I'll trust in your ways So cast your cares On his shoulders Cast your cares On his love The storms might come, but he'll never leave. Take his word, he'll forever be. Source of strength when we're running out of energy. Place your cares on his shoulders, the remedy. He'll give you strength that is needed for every task. I know he's on our side and that's everything. In the past, he has led us even through the dark. And everything we need, we can ask. Cause I know. Cause I know you're with me. You're, with me. you're, near, you're near me. You're for me. You're for me. I know you're listening, listening and leading and, leading, and, loving, and loving. And I pray that you'll hear me you hear and, us free, and free us and carry. And carry. I know that you're with me, you're near me, you're for me. In my, my weakness, in my trouble, when it's darkest and it's hardest, when I'm lonely, you console me. When I'm searching, I'm I'm hurting, oh, I need know you. that you're with me. You're with me. You're we cast our cares on you. I cast my cares on your shoulders. On his shoulders. Oh Jesus, I cast my cares on his love. So Christmas is obviously that time of year where it really does highlight loneliness, uh, isolation, um, whether you know you've moved here or you just find yourself you know alone. And so right now, um, I would love to encourage you guys as the days and the weeks kind of roll by leading up to Christmas, and we know we're still a couple of weeks out, we really want to encourage you to make sure that you're not going to spend Christmas alone this year. And we're going to keep our, keep our website as up to date as possible as the government kind of keeps releasing information. So make sure, you know, 
23rd, 24th, just, well, maybe not the 24th, but try and make plans. And we're doing everything that we can as a church to make sure that you're not gonna be alone on Christmas day. So please promise us somehow that you'll, um, that you'll keep checking the website to get the most up-to-date information. Just please don't be by yourself because you know I'm super grateful um, for you guys. There's a lot of things I know we're all really grateful for throughout the year. And it often just boils down at the end of the day for pe you know two people and our relationships that we have with those, and um, and so I think this would probably be a really nice note, a really nice way to finish this one. We've reflected on the year that has kind of been and some of our highlights and challenges and whatnot, and um, and I know next next show we kind of want to look more to the future. So um, until next time. Love you guys. See you soon. Let's end no, this. Hey, hey, let's cheese. end it. Then we're going to have that reflective moment time. <laughs> 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 right now. No, wait, wait. He's an emotional leader. <laughs> he always reaches for cheese when, when he's had his <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to sit there much? <laughs> Whilst he wraps up. <laughs> this is a slow bunch. <laughs> Gets him real quick. <laughs> <laughs> eating cracker. You're not eating like a marshmallow or yeah. something that's sweet. What does that mean, a cracker? It's a cracker. It's a cracker. It's a cracker. It's a cracker. <laughs> Mate, I think it's. They're rolling. They're rolling. Looking for the job. <laughs>